Amen. We're going to look at we're in Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. Uh, while you're opening your Bible up there, we'll give you a couple of announcements. Uh, for the offering today, the offering bucket is out in the foyer on the bench there. So you drop your offering in there when you uh, are leaving. And you give us unto the Lord. We're launching into a new year. And so make sure you uh, are faithful in giving of your tithes and free will offerings. Also on the counter out in the foyer is a roster of topics to be discussed in our annual church meeting. Our annual church meeting will be on January the 16th. And so we want you to be praying about the mission budget, our regular budget. Also, you, our annual report will be given out on January the 12th. That's a Wednesday evening, so you can read through that before the annual church meeting. If you're a member of the church, you really need to be here for that meeting. And uh, that's all, getting uh, all the information about this past year and also uh, launching out uh, and approving what we need to approve for the new year. So make sure you uh, take advantage of that. Uh, remember this Wednesday, there will be no children's child, uh, ministries this Wednesday, uh, just because of the increase of people getting sick and COVID spreading around. We're just uh, trying to uh, sidestep that so we don't have any exposures that is unnecessary. And uh, also uh, Ocean County Christian Academy will remain closed for Christmas break. This week we're extending it one week just to deal with uh, uh, increase in infections among the student body. And so uh, you will pray about that with us and help us with that. Uh, we appreciate that. I appreciate uh, those that are watching live stream this morning, the lightening up on the attendance. We appreciate you helping us out that way. Church will be at six o'clock tonight. You're welcome to be here or watch live stream. And uh, uh, live stream is okay, but you don't get the heat of the sermon if you're not here. <laughs> Anyway, uh, there's some, a few announcements that you need to be aware of, and uh, we want you to take advantage of those opportunities to be able to serve the Lord. Exodus chapter 12, I'm going to begin reading in uh, verse 1. It says, The Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto the, all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, uh, they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, uh, let him and his neighbor next un, uh, unto his house, Take it according to the number of the souls, every man according to his eating uh, shall make uh, your count for the lamb. For the lamb shall be without blemish, uh, a male the first year. Uh, ye shall take it out of, of the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. The whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it. In the evening, and they shall take of the blood and sprinkle it on the two uh, side posts and on the upper door posts of the house wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Uh, eat not it of, of it raw nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire his head with his legs and with his uh, per perpetence thereof. And ye shall uh, let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. And thus ye shall eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Let's pray. God, we're so thankful 
uh, to be able to be together here in church this morning. We're thankful that we can connect with one another via live stream. And uh, Lord, most of all, though, we're glad that we can connect with the God of heaven as we read his word. And so, Lord, as we enter into this new year, I pray that you'd give us uh, some perspective about what we should or should not be. I pray that you might impress upon our hearts a, a clear vision of what it is God will do through us uh, this new year. I pray, Lord, that as we launch out into this new year, uh, there would be on our hearts a, a tenderness and a burden for people to be saved. And I pray that we might be able to see a multitude of people coming to Christ this new year. And so, God, I pray that you might bless the preaching of the Word of God this morning. Uh, help us to comprehend what is being said and help us to be sound in our application of the Word into our personal lives. And I pray this and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our text verse is verse, actually three verses, verse 11 through 13 says, And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it uh, in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And uh, the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. So entering into the new year, uh, at the beginning of the chapter, he identifies the beginning of the year. In verse 2, he says, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. Well, it's January. It's the beginning of the months of, uh, in the new year. And so God, I believe, has something to say to us and challenge us through this passage of Scripture. Israel has been in bondage for 430 years. Oftentimes we have uh, stressful situations or we have uh, situations where we feel like we're not in control of that. And it may only ask, last for a few days or maybe for a month or whatever. And we think it's a long time. Israel's been in bondage for 430 years. Uh, and uh, they all had now God comes on the scene through Moses to bring them out of bondage in Egypt. And now they're going to watch God uh, br bring his judgment on Egypt uh, through the plagues that the, they will experience. Uh, I heard one preacher say that these plagues uh, took a period of about nine months. Oftentimes we read them, we think, okay, a plague happened today, and then tomorrow we had another plague. And so in 10 plagues, 10 days, it was all done with. No, it was several months. Uh, these plagues going through and, and Pharaoh rejecting the opportunity to let Israel go, and God would continue to bring his judgment on there. Now that God has gotten everyone's attention and the final judgment is coming on Israel, on Egypt, as far as their firstborn dying, God is going to now set them free. Uh, he is going to give them an opportunity to be able to enter into a new era of history uh, as the people of Israel. And realize that as we go into 2022, uh, we're entering into the new year as a new era, a new opportunity to live for the Lord. 2021 is over and it is gone. And whether we're dealing with uh, economics issues, political issues, or we're dealing with COVID issues, whatever it is, 2022 has its own unique experiences that we're going to have to go through. And so how can we approach this opportunity of going into a new year uh, from a biblical perspective in reference to Israel, uh, connecting with God, leading them and directing them into this new life that they're going to live no longer in bondage in Egypt. I see first of all in verse 11 there's preparation. I'm thankful that God always uh, establishes preparation for us. My pastor he always used to say there's a prepared place for a prepared man. And sometimes we think, well, wait a minute, I can just do it. I can just wing it. No, we need to be prepared for what it is that the Lord is going to do. He says, and thus shall ye eat it 
with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, uh, ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. And so he's preparing them for this journey that they're going on. But notice the preparation and experiencing and observing the Lord's Passover. There is a preparation time. And uh, verse 11, notice they were to eat it with their loins girded. So I call it this preparation is your way. You know, over in the book of Acts, uh, when the ch uh, 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 church was growing and being established, people were being saved. Uh, really, the world, the unsaved crowd, the heathen did not know how to respond to what was going on in people's lives. And it's interesting, in Acts chapter 19 and verse 9, the response or the name that they give to this matter of Christianity. In Acts chapter 19 and verse 9, it says, but when divers were hardened, I mean, just different people were hardened to the gospel that was being presented. It says, I believe not, but spake evil of that way. The church, the Christians were called that way. And it says, so uh, uh, before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannius. Then in verse 23 of Acts chapter 19, uh, continues uh, stating it this way. It says, at the same time, there also rose no small stir about the way. Uh, they didn't know what, what to call it. They didn't know what, how to identify it with. Certainly we know that uh, Christian uh, believers were called Christians first at Antioch, but the heathen didn't know what to do with these Christians. Everything was stirred up. Everything was turned upside down. I mean, they had a faith that did not cower in the corner when opposition came into their face and face. And all they could do is respond to them. We don't understand these people after this way. And then chapter 24 in uh, verse 22, uh, Felix, when he Paul is before Felix, in chapter 24, verse 22, says, And when Felix heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of that way he deferred them and said when uh, Lystra the chief captain shall come down I will know uttermost of your matter and so uh, even Felix and Paul was before him and trying to deal with this matter of who Paul is what has happened into his life what changes took place why is he being accused why is he being thrown in prison all they could do is refer to it as the way and so when you think about preparation of going into the new year, uh, what's your way? And how are you living? What's your character? When people look at you, uh, what, what is their response in reference to who you are? 2022 gives us great new opportunities for us to shake people up, to show them what a Christian is, to live our life in a way that they're confused and say, I don't understand this that took place in your life. Because when Jesus comes into a person's life, their way of living is completely transformed. And, uh, and, and you know, Paul was transformed. He was a persecutor of the church, but he became a preacher of the church. Uh, you think about Peter and his steadfastness of the traditions of the Jewish faith, and, and yet he becomes a great preacher and apostle of the early church. His life was drastically changed. You see, all the way through the scriptures, Abraham was called Abram, but his name was changed to Abraham. Sarai's name was changed to Sarah. Uh, we have uh, Jacob was changed to Israel. God changes people's lives. And as we go into the new year, we need to be prepared to let God do what he will in our life so as to get the attention of the world that is around us. Preparation is going to have to require of each of us uh, to gird your loins and be ready to be different than what the world is. But the second thing I see this in preparation is your walk because he says oh, uh, that they were to eat, the, eat it with their loins girded and your shoes on your feet. In other words, you need to be ready to go. You know, in, in Genesis 5, 24, it says, Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for the Lord took him. 
And the glorious thing is this, that God does have a way that we are supposed to walk. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's interesting to watch kids over the years, the trends in culture and, and the people doing their tip. You know, I remember I was a uh, young kid, you know, it was a big thing about tipping when you're walking. And, uh, you know, <laughs> and some of you are laughing because you know exactly what I'm talking about. And they looked like you were lame, looked like you were about ready to fall over. But anyway, you know, everybody's got their thing, you know, whatever the generation is, yo, yo, you know. And uh, but what's, what's your walk going to be? Is your walk going to be with God or is it going to be with the world? And you say, well, what does that have to do with preparation? Everything, because if you're not preparing to walk with God, I'm going to guarantee it's not going to come natural. You have to make the decision that you're going to walk with the Lord. When everyone else was abandoning God, uh, Enoch walked with God. And because of his closeness and relationship with his God, uh, he was taken to glory. He was not, for the Lord took him. And so I thought about your walk. I thought about our vocation. Our vocation. I'm not talking about a full-time ministry vocation. I'm talking about what Ephesians 4.1 tells us. Paul says this, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. And I underlined it, wherewith ye are called. And uh, our vocation, the way we walk, the way we live our life, the way we carry ourselves in the world is based on God's call upon your life. God has a specific call upon my life. That call he has on my life may not be the call that God has for you. And uh, so you have to determine, all right, Lord, if you have a will and a plan for me, how can I walk in the center of that plan? Because I want to acknowledge the fact that I want to be worthy of the vocation that you have called me. I was, I was listening to Dr. Tom Malone preaching and he had mentioned at that time, and this was several, quite a few years ago now, uh, he had been preaching for 51 years. And I, I just thought about that when he was preaching. I've heard him say that over and over again, different amounts of times that he had been preaching over the years. But it just kind of hit me with the reality of the preparation time that God invests in a person's life and he places a call on that person to fulfill that lifestyle and that ministry that he wants to accomplish through that specific individual, but it will not take place unless we're faithful to the vocation that God has called us. We need to walk in this world as a Christian. Amen. And uh, we, we don't want to walk in this world trying to act like everybody else. Uh, listen, it does not matter if people like you. It does not matter if they enjoy your faith in Christ. What matters is that you are a faithful witness and testimony day by day, walking in fellowship with God, fulfilling God's call upon your life. And we have all been called to be witnesses, and so we are vocation. We need to walk worthy of the vocation. I thought about your shoes on your feet, not only vocation, but I thought of obligation. That places an obligation on us. God is really placing an obligation on the children of Israel here on how they're to respond to what he is about ready to do. And so God places an obligation on us to how, in reference to how are we going to respond in reference to what God wants to do. And I, I told Colossians 1.10, says that you may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. And I, I just kind of underlined in my notes there, walk worthy of the Lord and, and underline this, unto all pleasing. And uh, certainly as vocation is referenced to fulfilling a call, obligation is in reference to satisfying a desire. Unto all pleasing. We want to live our life and prepare to live our life the way we walk in this world in a way that is pleasing to God. 
What good would it be in your life if you were able to satisfy everybody you come in contact with, satisfy all your employers, be able to satisfy all your family, and everybody's happy with you, and then you stand before God and God says, I'm not pleased with what you did. And I think this preparation that is laid out for us here in verse 11, that Israel had to be ready to leave the promise, uh, leave the land of Egypt to go to the promised land was a reality check on them. Were they willing to please the Lord? Because over and over again, they said, give us your law, we'll obey it. God giving, it would give them their, his law and he, they would disobey it, they would break it. And so we have an obligation to pre be prepared to walk with God in this new year. And then I wrote down not only vocation and obligation, but glorification. Glorification. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 12, says that ye would walk worthy of God, uh, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. And uh, the amazing thing is this, uh, God has not called us to walk worthy of the kingdoms on this earth. It is more important for us to identify with the kingdom of God than it is for the kingdoms that we have here. You know, you know, Abraham, you find Abraham's life, he dwelled in tents. Why did he dwell in tents? Because of the fact his desire was, he realized that his home was not here on this earth, but rather his home was in heaven. He was looking for that city whose foundation and maker was God. He wasn't looking for what he could uh, 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 incorporate in his life and build up for himself because of the fact that he was living in light of the kingdom and the glory of God Almighty. And so you're walk in Matthew 6, 33, but seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Uh, that's still in the Bible, folks. We seek the Lord number one, and everything else is number two in our life. I know when I got saved, I was driving a tractor and trailer, and, and uh, they would want me to take loads uh, that would uh, haul, I don't know, we used to, they used to haul whiskey. They wanted me to haul whiskey. I said, they ain't going on my truck. I ain't picking it up. And uh, they used to get so mad at me because I said, no, I'm a Christian. I'm not carrying that stuff. Uh, you know, I dumped that stuff down the drain when I got saved, and I'm not going to put it on a truck to carry it to somebody to ruin their life. I uh, always, when I were talking the other day, and you know, um, uh, uh, some beautiful horses are those uh, Clydesdales, uh, Budweiser Cl Clydesdale. And uh, what beautiful horses they are, and the, how they treat them, and how they care for them. And how they transport them. I mean, you're talking about multi millions of dollars to care for a stupid horse. And I thought I told my wife, I said, Yeah, isn't it amazing? They have no money with spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars upon thousands of dollars to be able to promote something that's gonna ruin somebody's life. You know, not only ruin their life health wise, but they'll ruin their, their family, socially speaking, and will ruin their ability to even be able to make a living and to be able to continue on his word. Well, world in which we live in, the Christian does not live in the light of what the world has to offer. We live in the glory of God. And so preparation, your way, your walk. And then I put down here your work. Notice it says in verse 11, your staff in your hand. Your staff in your hand. You know, Paul will talk about the work of the ministry. And oftentimes we forget that uh, ministry is work. And Philippians chapter 2 and verse 25. You know, it's just, it's, it's always amazing. I think people think church just happens on Sunday. Uh, there's a lot of work that has to go into preparing, preparation. Preparing to have a church service. And certainly in the days in which we're living where we have all these other added stresses and obligations, responsibilities, health issues. you got all these things and you got to try to do ministry, your work. 
It's work to live for God and to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 25 says, Having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all your fatherance and joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. And here it is. Only let your conversation, that means your lifestyle, be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that, you, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. That's our theme for the new year is together. We work together to do the ministry so as to be able to reach out to other people so that they might be saved also. So preparation. Uh, I see in verse 12, provocation. In verse 12, notice it says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Provocation. There is, there is an opposition between God and Egypt. There is an opposition between God and this world. And he said, I'm going to pass through Egypt, and I'm going to smite their firstborn, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Here's some things here. The provocation is based on the presence of God. And uh, the presence of God. Did, did I skip over a whole lot? Did I? Huh? And you don't have the presence of God? And I must have not been thinking about uh, what I was doing back there when I put that on. All right, here it is. The first, before we get down to those other points, uh, the presence of God, he says, I will pass through the land. And I, I just think of 2022, we need, to, we need to be a part of getting God passing through the land. Uh, Pete, listen, God indwells us. His Holy Spirit is in us. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So everywhere we go, God is there. There's never a time when you're separated from God. And so when we go through the land, uh, we need to realize that it is the presence of God that will make a difference. It is not us, but rather God that is in us that makes a difference. And so the presence of God. And then there's the power of God. Because he says, and we'll smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. And so, listen, the world can deny Christ. The world can reject the Lord. They can mock your faith. They can do whatever they want, but the reality is, the bottom line is God is almighty, He is all-powerful, and the world cannot stand against a God who releases His wrath on it. And so, we see He's going to smite all the land. And then the position of God is simply, I am the Lord. That phrase, I am the Lord, is used 162 times in the Old Testament. I am the Lord. The first time that it's used is in Genesis chapter 15 and verse 7. And it says, he says this, and he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And so God, the first time God uses that phrase, I am the Lord, he's talking to Abraham and he's reminding Abraham that he was able to remove him from the Ur of Chaldees to the land, the promised land that he had said he would give to Abraham. That speaks to me of omnipotence. All-powerful God who can do what he desires to do at the moment he desires to do it. And then the last time that phrase is used in the Old Testament is Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6, which says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And so, be, based on the omnipotence of God, we have the immutability of God. God does not change. And so, as God had brought Abraham out of the Ur of Chaldees and placed him in the promised land, 
Uh, he's reminding Israel just before the Old Testament closes that I'm the Lord that has preserved you because if I wasn't all powerful and if I wasn't unchangeable, uh, then you still, you would not be my people and you would have been consumed of, this, of the enemy in this world. So I see the provocation. The provocation is not between us and the world is between God and the world. The provocation is not between us and Satan, it's between Christ and Satan. And so he is the Lord of hosts and he is the one that fights the battle. And so we let God be God and we live our life for his glory. So entering the new year is preparation, provocation. And then in verse 13 is propitiation. Notice in verse 13 it says, And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses wherein you are. Uh, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. So I see, first of all, the identification that takes place. The blood, it says, shall be a token to you upon your house. When a person trusts Christ as their Savior, as they, he is on the, died on the cross and he shed his blood for us, we realize this, that we are identifying with who he is. Why? Because without the shedding of blood, there is no remissions of sins. And so when a person gets saved, they cannot just generically say, I believe in God. They have to identify with Jesus Christ. Because neither is there salvation in any other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. And so identification, we are a Christian because we have surrendered our life and believed on Jesus Christ. That's our identity. Our identity is nothing else in this world. Our identity is Jesus and Jesus alone. And then I see the elimination. It says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. That reminds us of Romans chapter 8 verse 1. There is now therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. And so the, the elimination of God's condemnation on us is the fact that Jesus Christ died in our place. And because he died in our place, uh, then all the judgment of our sin is laid on Jesus Christ and he enables us to not be condemned because he said, I will smite the land. And uh, and he, when he, I'm thankful that God has not appointed us to wrath, but I'm thankful that when the trump of God sounds, we're going to glory Amen. because of the fact we're identified with Jesus. The judgment of sin has been eliminated from us because it fell on Jesus. And there is no condemnation upon us because Jesus took all of our condemnation upon him. In Psalm 96 in verse 10 says, So among the heathen that the Lord, say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth, the world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. And so knowing this, that he was going, he reminds Israel, I'm going through the land to smite the land. He was not there to smite his people. He was there to release his people. So as we go into this new year, you think of preparation, the provocation of God, and the propitiation of God. Entering the new year, I have to ask three questions. Number one, are you preparing yourself as, uh, so as to be ready for God to use you? That's a serious question. Are you preparing yourself so that you will be ready for God to use you. Or are we just going into the new year? Well, to, you know, 2021 was a rough year or whatever. I just wonder what 2022 is going to bring, what we're going to experience in 2022. Why don't we think in the mindset that I need to get ready for what it is God wants me to do? You say, well, what is it? I don't know. But God knows, but I know this, he's not going to enable me and allow me to experience that and be involved in that if I'm not preparing myself for God to use me. And so I need to be praying. I need to be reading the Bible. I need to be meditating on the principles of God. I need to be assessing how my life can change through faith in Christ. 
I, I need those things actively involved in my life so that I'm ready to accomplish whatever it is God wants to do with me and through me. So how are you preparing yourself so as to be ready for God to use you? Number two, are you ready to meet the challenges of the new year? Because uh, there's some great challenges. 2021 brought some great challenges to us. And by great, I don't mean blessed. I mean, they were overwhelming. Uh, but 2022, I have no idea what it's going to bring. But I don't know what tomorrow is going to be or what's going to happen, but I know God does. So I want to be prepared to meet the challenge. I don't, I don't want 2022 to be the, the, the deciding year in my life where I quit on God. I don't want 2022 to be the, the decisive year that causes me to stop going to church or to stop reading my Bible or stop surrendering my life to the Lord. I don't want 2022 to, to be the destroyer of my testimony. Amen. So I want it to be prepared. I want to be ready to meet the challenge. God, whatever the challenge is, impress upon my heart. Show me. Reveal it to me so I can get ready to deal with that challenge in my life. You know, the children of Israel, the problem with the spies that went in, they saw the giants in the land where Caleb and Joshua didn't see the giants. They saw the God who could defeat the giants. And there's, gonna, there's giants waiting for us in 2022. But there's a God in heaven who can defeat every one of them. So are you ready to meet the challenges? Then number three, you have to ask the question, have you been cleansed by the blood of Christ? You may be here this morning, you might be watching live stream, but you've never been saved. You've never been born again. You've tried to be righteous, tried to be a good person. You've tried to kind of change your lifestyle, whatever, but nothing's working. It's because you need the blood of Christ to cleanse you and wash you and deliver you. And so if you're not sure you're saved, if you're not sure you've never ever been cleansed by the blood, you need to come and let us show you from the Bible how to be saved this morning. Entering the new year. I mean, it's exciting. Just think of what 2022 has to offer. We already have some challenges to deal with. Amen. It's exciting to think, how am I going to get through this? How, I'm going to, how are we going to see God do something that's completely out of our control? Then who gets the glory? Only God gets the glory when that takes place. And the deliverance of Israel out of Egypt, Moses couldn't get the glory. Joshua couldn't get the glory. No, none of the leaders in Israel could get the glory. When he brought them out by his power and by his grace and his wrath coming on Egypt, there's only one person who could get the glory, and that was Jehovah God. Amen. And we want to be able to see Jehovah God get the glory through Christ Jesus for everything that takes place in our life in 2022 entering into the new year. Amen. Let's pray. My God, I thank you so much, Lord, for grace. I thank you, Lord, for new life that we can have through faith in Christ. I, I'm thankful for the example we find in Scripture, how you worked in the life of Israel. Lord, I pray you would help us to be prepared for this new year. Uh, give us uh, Scripture. Give us give us peace. Give us a mind that's focused on Christ. Uh, Lord, help us be prepared for the challenges because we know, Lord, that you're against the wicked. Uh, and so, Lord, we want to be able to walk with you. We want to be worthy of the calling of God in our life. And Lord, we know whatever we are, whatever we can accomplish is only through the sacrifice of Christ. He is the propitiation for our sin. And we thank you, Lord. So help us, help us, Lord, uh, to launch into this new year with the determination that Jesus Christ is King of kings and he is the Lord of lords. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing a song. Is your on the altar? Is your all on the altar? Let's stand and sing. If you're watching by live stream, this would be a great time for you in your living room, where we are watching, to make a decision for Christ. Realize this just because you're watching live stream doesn't eliminate the opportunity for you to make a decision for the Lord. You're not sure.
sure you're saved, you need to get a hold of them. We'll show you how to be saved. If you're a Christian, you're going into the new year, you're not sure. You're apprehensive about what the new year holds for you. I want you to know there's a God in heaven who cares for you. And you can come and you can surrender your life. You can kneel right in your living room. I remember years ago, my wife got saved watching a television preacher. He said, you're right in your living room. You can kneel in your living room and ask Jesus to be your Savior. That's what she did, and she got glorious and saved. It's not complicated. It's just knowing this is a new year that God's given us. How are we going to approach that? How are we going to surrender that? Are we going to give it all to the Lord Jesus Christ? church will be at six o'clock tonight amen and uh, so i want to encourage you to be in church or you can watch live stream next week we're going back to our regular services on sunday morning we'll have sunday school and we'll have the regular services just uh unless some major changes amen so uh, this is always a fluid situation that we're trying to make decisions about and so uh, you be careful stay healthy amen and we're expecting great things from God in this new year. Pastor Juana. Just before we pray, one final announcement on the giving. I had mentioned last week that uh, they're changing the mobile app. They are changing the mobile app, but I got some additional information. If you're set up for regular withdrawals on your, um, on your giving app, that will not change. You don't need to do anything. If you want to make changes to your account, you need to download the new app. The login, your username, and your password remains the same. And just log in it's basically going to be the same thing just a different app but if you have just regular withdrawal you have to make no changes it'll transfer over to the new app without any problems all right let's pray lord thank you so much uh, lord we know that last year was full of challenges and, and hurdles but also we also saw the hand of god working in us lord working in our church and lord we know that with challenges and difficulties provides an opportunity for us lord to be able to uh, just see the, the, the hand of God working and to honor and glorify you, Lord. And Lord, maybe we're here this morning and we're, we're thinking that, you know, last year we, we didn't do what we should have done for you. But Lord, it's a new year. Today's a new day. And Lord, may today be the day that we start anew. Lord, that we have a fresh vision from you, that we have a renewed spirit to serve you, Lord. And that we would realize, Lord, that there's no greater place to be than in the center of your will, doing the work of God. 
And so, Lord, we pray that you would use this, Lord, today, tomorrow, this year, in a mighty and powerful way, that we would see the hand of God working in our lives to bring others to you and to continue ministering and serving you in every capacity we can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.